When Jack Kirby and Stan Lee first introduced the X-Men into the Marvel Universe, it's doubtful they ever envisioned that their team of mutants would become such an integral part of not just their world, but of the comics medium too. Some 56 years later and Marvel's mutants are still going strong. They're still selling by the truckload, and not just the books but the merchandise as well, and they've even had a few movies made about them, with varying degrees of success. Also, they're the best. I say this having constantly struggled to get into the team over the years, but hey, we all gotta start somewhere. With all that past and all that history to look back on, it's time to take a closer peek at what comics made Marvel's most uncanny team so special. I'm Ewan, this is What Culture Comics, and here are 10 X-Men comics you must read before you die. Number 10, Astonishing X-Men. All right, so this may be a little bit of a cheat, but there is no denying that Joss Whedon's run on the Astonishing X-Men, which began in 2005 and ran for 25 issues, reinvigorated Marvel's number one team of mutants. During his and John Cassidy's time at the helm, the Avengers director brought Colossus back from the dead, turned the Danger Room into a living entity, gave the world a new Hellfire Club, sent the X-Men on a violent journey to Breakworld, and had Shadowcat save the planet by phasing into a giant bullet before disappearing into space along with it. Whether it's Kitty Pride and Emma Frost sniping at each other on the former's return, or Cyclops finally being allowed to show he's much more than a vanilla flavoured one dimensional personality vacuum, Whedon took his legendary writing chops and let them run wild. Number 9, Days of Future Past. Back in 1981, Chris Claremont and John Byrne came up with the idea to base a story in two different timelines, that of the current year and one set in the way distant future of 2013. With their planet ravaged due to Mystique and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants assassinating presidential candidate Robert Kelly, thus bringing about the Sentinel program that jackboots its way through the world, killing or imprisoning anyone with even the hint of superpowers about them, Rachel Summers sends an older version of Kitty Pride back in time to make sure this never happens. When she finally convinces them that she's not, you know, completely bonkers, the past versions of the X-Men rush to do everything they can to stop the future from ever taking place, culminating in them falling the assassination from happening, thus averting that horror that would otherwise await them. Number 8, New X-Men. In the same vein as the Joss Whedon entry, Grant Morrison's take on the X-Men cannot be broken down into just one specific story. Not when the quality on offer from our beloved Chaos Magician is so damn breathtaking. Starting in 2001 and running all the way to 2004, Morrison's three-year stint at the helm of Marvel's favourite mutants would see them be put through the ringer on multiple occasions. And all of it was brought to life by his frequent collaborator and partner in crime, Frank Quitely. Set after the destruction of Genosha, the two introduce a myriad of characters into the fold. There's the mutant Zorn, as well as one Quentin Quire, who is fully realised as the super intelligent kid Omega, and that's just naming two who flesh out an already stellar lineup. Really, the genius of Morrison's X-Men lies in its depiction of mutant identity as culture. We're seeing something similar with how Hickman's setting up House of X currently, but it was pronounced two decades ago with new X-Men. Add in interesting concepts like secondary mutations, the emergence of Emma Frost as a valuable member of the team, and one of the greatest plot twists in comics history, and you have a run for the ages. Oh, and one more thing about Morrison's new X-Men, it gave us the cat-like beast, which is pretty amazing. I mean, look at him. Ah, oh, I love Hank McCoy. Number 7, X-Men Season 1. Although it's true that Stan Lee and Jack Kirby created the X-Men, the team's trademark traits weren't developed until years after the legendary duo left the book. It was the aforementioned Claremont who engendered the melodrama the series became known for, as well as his biting social commentary and family dynamic. So, in order to make the early years of the team match up with what came later, Marvel released X-Men Season 1, a prequel comic written by Dennis Hopeless with art courtesy of Jamie McKelvey, the man behind Captain Marvel's new and iconic threads. Season 1 does what it says on the tin in that it focuses on on the team during their formative months. The original five of Beast, Jean, Angel, Cyclops, and Iceman are all there, but Hopeless and McKelvey are able to modernize their origin in a truly worthwhile manner. Number 6, The Mutant Massacre. This 1986 crossover event was written by Chris Claremont and Louise and Walter Simonson, illustrated by John Romita Jr., again Walter Simonson, and Sal Buscema. And if that doesn't tell you that you really need to read this book, then nothing will. When the Marauders attack the underground-dwelling Morlocks at the behest of Mr. Sinister, it takes the combined efforts of both the X-Men and X-Factor to stop them being completely wiped out, but this is not the whole tale. Both X-Men and X-Factor suffer major injuries. 
Angel is pinned to a wall, suffering major damage to his wings that eventually leads to them being amputated. Shadow Cat's phasing ability gets so messed up it almost kills her, and more drama comes later involving Gambit. It's a great story, and one all fans should read given the chance. Number 5. Inferno If there's one thing that Marvel like, it's a crossover event. They like it even more if the whole thing can last almost a year, so Inferno ticks all the right boxes as far as that's concerned. Throw into the mix that it's an epic story that has appearances from the Fantastic Four, The Avengers, Daredevil, and Spider-Man, and Inferno is a definite for all fans of mutant kind. When a demonic invasion plagues the planet, Earth's Mightiest Heroes must team up to send it straight back to hell. Along the way, they battle the Hobgoblin, who is now possessed by a demon, as well as the Boogeyman, who just straight up hates mutants. But the main fight here, the true story, is the conflict between Madeline Pryor and Jean Grey. When Madeline discovers that she is, in fact, a clone of Jean's, made inside of Mr. Sinister's laboratory, she takes it about as well as you'd expect. Losing her mind, she attacks Jean with a psychic link and, after flooding her mind with memories, wills herself to die so she can take Jeannie with her. It's a great ending to Madeline's character arc and proves once and for all that anything Phoenix Force related can only be bad for your health, including everything up to and including watching Dark Phoenix on the big screen. Don't do it, folks! Number 4. God Loves, Man Kills Stan Lee always said that he created the X-Men as an allegory for the civil rights movement, and while that's sort of gone down as one of the great myths of Stan's Marvel, the message was certainly apparent in 1982's God Loves, Man Kills. When two mutant children are murdered under the orders of Reverend William Stryker, it sets in motion a plot that sees every mutant killed in one fell swoop. Stryker is not a normal human being. Sure, he has no powers, but he is pure evil to his core. This is, after all, the man who murders both his wife and newborn after he discovers the baby is a mutant and, if he has his way, he'll murder every last person who has the nerve to be different. He successfully kidnaps Professor X and straps him to a machine that can kill all mutant kind with one massive cerebral hemorrhage. Luckily, the X-Men and Magneto, of all people, save the day, and Charles Xavier too, and even manage to beat Stryker into admitting it all on national TV. Written by Chris Claremont and illustrated by Brent Anderson, God Loves is a no-holds-barred look at bigotry and how the mutant metaphor endures for the oppressed. It also inspired X2 X-Men United, so there's that too. Number 3. Age of Apocalypse When Charles Xavier's son Legion travels back in time to kill Magneto, he gets it wrong on a grand scale and accidentally kills his father instead. This has dire consequences, as with Xavier out of the way, and Sabanur attacked the Earth 10 years earlier than he was supposed to, which changed the timeline completely and brought about the Age of Apocalypse. With his survival of the fittest mantra in full effect, millions would perish as he thinned out the herd, leaving only the strongest to live in servitude. But all was not lost, as familiar mutants would group together to defy him, and in doing so, they would change the timeline back to the way it should have been all along. Plus, this has one of the all-time great Wolverine designs going, which is a neat bonus. Number 2. House of M Written by Brian Michael Bendis and drawn by Olivier Corpel, 2005's House of M picks up where Planet X and Avengers Disassembled left off. On the island of Genosha, Wanda Maximoff is in a living hell. Her children are gone and her husband the Vision is dead at her own hands. This leads her to have a complete mental breakdown, and with her powers out of control, it's down to Charles Xavier to try and help her bring her back to reality. When this seems almost impossible, as she is getting more and more unstable with each passing day, the Avengers and the X-Men meet to decide her fate. Then, when Scarlet Witch discovers what is going on and how her so-called friends are contemplating doing the unthinkable, she snaps and warps reality to her own liking, thus ushering in the House of M, where mutants are the superior race and humans are looked down upon with disdain. The one person knows that something isn't right and, having lived through more lifetimes than he care to remember, it's up to Logan to convince the others that everything has changed, and not necessarily for the better. And number 1. The Dark Phoenix Saga Written by usual suspect and all-around legend Chris Claremont, again, and illustrated by his erstwhile partner in crime, John Byrne, the Dark Phoenix saga easily deserves its place at the top of this list. It's also a story that everyone who's into comics should really be familiar with. It's the tale of how a dying Jean Grey, who's full to the brim with radiation exposure, cries out for someone to help her as she tries to pilot her friends back to Earth and safely. Her call is answered by the Phoenix Force, the sum of all life in the universe who protects Jean's mind inside a replica body. But after they crash land back on the planet, Planet, the Force awakens and is convinced that it is truly Jean Grey, which wouldn't be a problem until it gets its first taste of evil and goes mad with power. This compels the X-Men to take her down permanently, even if that could result in Jean's death. And really, X-Men stories don't get any better, even if plenty have come close in the years since. And that was our list. What are your favourite X-Men comics? Let us know down in the comments below and please be sure to like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help the channel and it would mean a whole lot. 
Either way, you can find more of this content over on whatculture.com, catch me on Twitter at you ruins things, and wait for me on here until the next video. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!